Hello everyone, and it's that time again. Welcome to the Sydney St. James Show. We sure appreciate you dropping in. What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Sydney St. James Show, the podcast all about being an author and getting noticed in the ebook, print book, and even the audiobook marketplaces. Today, we're taking an in-depth look at True Love Ways, a top 10 seller on Amazon.com. I will talk about my characters, some of the drama, and yes, just what True Love Ways means. And I will answer for you, what is a June bride? Oh, and yes, by the way, a special thanks to all my listeners over there in Ireland and the Netherlands for the many of you who are already tuned in and following my podcast. You know, there's a lot of talk about love this time of year as the month of June approaches, and so many women choose this popular month to be a June bride. Another popular month is February, of course, on Valentine's. That's when kids pack up small notes and candies to share with their classmates at school. Couples go out to fancy dinners at some popular Italian restaurant. And men rush to buy roses for that special someone. But let's get back to June. Why June? Why not May or even July? Well, June has been and still is traditionally the most popular month to many to get married. The goddess Juno, for whom June is actually named after, was the protector of women in all aspects of life, but especially in marriage and childbearing. So a wedding in Juno's month was considered most auspicious. You know, love is something we all want, and we want it deeply, and the pursuit of it can often take us down the wrong road or leave us feeling empty inside. So, how can we know for sure what true love is? Back in 1965, Peter and Gordon sang a song that was actually written by Buddy Holly called True Love Ways. As a youngster, I still remember dancing my first slow song with a girl in the community center who I decided would be my wife one day. She was from Deer Park, Texas, and was visiting our small little country town west of Houston. Funny how life branches out in many directions. It never happened. (laughs) You know, my story that we're talking about today is much like the song. It's unique because it's both romantic and it's realistic. It recognizes the truth that sometimes life will be difficult And boy, was it difficult. It took two novels to tell the complete story. The leading characters in the book will cry, but they'll work through it together, trust me. It might even possibly bring them closer. While this song acknowledges the outside world, sharing joys with those who really care, it is also intimate, just You and I know true love ways. Now, I know my singing is not the greatest in the world, but those are the lyrics. I often thought about this song in terms of a couple starting out. The use of will buy and buy or throughout the days or will bring us suggest that they're looking into the times ahead. Yet, it's applicable in far greater scope as seen in the writing of this novel, True Love Ways. You know, I asked myself during the writing of this outline, how can a person know that a relationship will last forever? Lovers don't expect that even a genuine relationship will consist only of passionate, positive emotions? In other words, 
when the bells and whistles slowly fade away. Makes sense, doesn't it? Well, the actual song lyrics themselves of True Love Ways were written in 1960 by Buddy Holly. And while on a plane shortly thereafter from writing that song was the day the music died. It was released posthumously, and it was written as a wedding gift for Buddy's wife. Holly's song predicted, Sometimes we'll sigh, and sometimes we'll cry. Throughout the days, our true love ways will bring us choice to share with those who really care. In my story, Marco Norman has fallen in love with Simone Wolfenson in New Orleans. She was most definitely a catch of any young man. And however, she lived in a very high society. And in the story, she demands that Marco be wealthy before she would marry him. She found a way by his marrying a dying girl, Miss Kirsten Hoffman who would soon inherit several million dollars and a magnificent estate in the Duchy of Oldenburg in Germany. Marco was to marry her, and when she died, take that inheritance and come back for Simone's hand in marriage. Well, as you can imagine, Kirsten lays on her deathbed as Marco walked back into her life after a 15-year absence. She said to him, I love you, Marco, like you're the very last of my kind. You speak the same language as me, and oh God, Marco, just to be around you is like finally not being alone. As if my life, I've been isolated in a windowless room. Then, after all these years, you walk through the doorway across the room, into my life. As if you were strolling over a summer meadow. How is it, Marco, that you are much, much more than sunshine? How is it you breathe life when there isn't anyone else that can? Tell me, Marco, why is it you are my medicine Who could love me more than you? So Marco, from this moment forward, know this. While I still breathe, I am yours in mind, body, and soul. I love you. That is what Kirsten told Marco when he came back in her life. Our story has many twists and turns. In the first of a two-part edition, we find there's another possible descendant, a cousin, and his name is Norman Hoffman. He works in a small mining community outside of San Francisco and is the son of the second-born Florian Hoffman. He gathers all of his documents that prove his identity and begins to travel to New Orleans to present his papers to the law firm Slayton and Slayton, down on Poydras. However, his travels come to an abrupt stop. One will have to wait and find out if the wolves devour him in the forest after a bullet passes through his chest. In the sequel to True Love Ways, I Fall to Pieces. You know, Remember, there are writers who do write a terrible ending to their novels at times. Take it from me. When my wife and I are watching such a movie and I look at her and I say, My God, sweetheart, why in the world would a writer kill off that man or that woman? At the stroke of a pen, he could have him riding off into the sunset. Why write a sad ending? Well, in my story, lots of questions go unanswered. Does Kirsten Hoffman live or does she die? Does Marco actually inherit the great fortune and return to Simone for her hand in marriage? 
And does Norman Hoffman survive that bullet wound in his chest and prove that he's next in line for the grand estate's wealth in Oldenburg, Germany? And lastly, does Simone marry Marco and sail off into the sunset with him after Kirsten dies? Of course, that would be the way I would write it. Sailing off into the sunset. Well, so much for all the what ifs. It's time now for a snippet from my novel, True Love Ways, like I always do. Just a little teaser to give you an idea of how the story reads. But first, a quick word from my sponsor. We'll be right back. Have you heard about Anchor.fm by Spotify? It's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Yep, Anchor has the tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Great, said Diane, looking down at Norman. What do you say for yourself, love? I'm getting well, Diane, and much faster than anyone thought because of my seeing your pretty face, he answered fondly. That's my man, she exclaimed, turning her head to look at Dr. Robbins. Will it be okay for Norman to see a good friend who has come all this way to see him? Are you talking about your brother, Davis? Yes, sir. Hmm, of course. Norman is out of danger now. He's welcome to come, the doctor said, leaving the room. Diane, did I hear you right? Davis has come to see me? My best friend? Yes. The big boy is sitting in the hallway, and I just need to go and fetch him. That's all. No sooner did she finish her words, Davis anxiously entered the doorway. He walked right up to Norman's bedside. Norman held out his hand to his welcome his friend. Norm, I'm so sorry to see you in such a plight, Davis began. Nonsense. I'm so much better thanks to your sister. I'm also thrilled to see you, Davis, he said while pressing his friend's hand firmly. You do know about Mr. Barbier, don't you? Yes. What do you mean, Davis? Diane asked. Norman answered, he's talking about the fate of Barbier. When I regained consciousness and was picked up for dead in the woods, I knew that my poor friend was not to be found, that he was left for dead for the wolves to feast upon. Both of us were struck down by unknown assailants. Wait, wait, Diane said. This is the first time I've heard anything about this. Is Mr. Barbier dead? inquired the young woman, aghast. Yes, he is, sis, answered Davis. Norman, I still don't understand. How did you know Mr. Barbier was dead? You had me, the good doctor, and Miss Robbins keeping all information that might shock you away. I guessed it, Diane. I put two and two together and realized the same people that shot me on the train, also killed him. The ruffians must have attacked us, both. They must have stricken us down at the same time. And Mr. Barbier to his death, and me to something near it, Norman explained. Well, that answers how Norman knew. Now, brother, tell me how you knew about it. When the train pulled into Bluff Creek, sis, Blue took off out of the travel car and began running through the woods. Andy and I followed him deep into the forest and came across a dead body, Davis gruffly replied. Oh, my God. Davis, you found his body? You found his body, Davis, Norman interjected, staring at his friend in horror. Jesus Christ, Davis. Don't you have any better sense to say that in the presence of Norman lying right here wounded in the hospital bed? Come now, Diane. 
You asked me, complained Davis. Now, now, the both of you. I'm too weak to be a referee in your wrestling match, he said while looking at both his sister and good friend. I'm not so hurt any longer that I can't bear the truth. It's dreadful, Diane, but it's no more dreadful and no more hurtful for me to hear than the both of you, said Norman, that his voice dispelled all of their fears. Now, Davis, continue. Tell me all the story. I need to know. Thus encouraged, Davis began and told of his journey through California and how Old Blue jumped from the train like he was crazy when it stopped in Bluff Creek. He continued and told how he and Andy raced after the dog until they came to a naked and mutilated dead body in the forest. It was so terrible. There was nothing left to identify the body as Medard Barbier. Poor, poor fella. Will he have a Christian burial, Davis? Hoffman inquired. Davis hesitated a moment and replied. The skeleton will. All that was left was bits and pieces of his hair. There's bound to be a cemetery here in Bluff Creek, and I will see that he gets a proper burial. Oh, poor Mr. Barbier. If it hadn't been for his kindness to me and wanting to keep my company on my journey to New Orleans, he might still be alive today, groaned Norman, who started turning restlessly in his hospital bed. Calm down, Norman. You shouldn't get excited. Doctor's orders, Diane said. If it hadn't been for his kindness to me, he would still be alive. It's my fault. Norman said while continuing to toss about in his bed. A nurse rushed into the hospital room and said excitedly, Enough! Enough, all of you. You must leave. Well, we'll never know unless we read the book. Did he leave? Did he stay in the room? Well, that does it for me here with episode 14. Thanks to all of you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode in Season 1, The Making of an Author, and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others. Post about it on your social media and subscribe or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at sydneystjames and or on my blog site, sydneystjames.com. And until next time, thanks again, and as always, see you later, alligator, and okie dokie, artichoke. Bye now. Happy listening. Well, that does it for me for another great episode from Sydney St. James. Be sure to click on the tab above that says send a voice message and I will get it from you and I'll probably play it back on one of my future podcasts. Also, don't forget to click the button follow. I'd love for you to follow my podcast. But it's been fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And until next time, here I am, Sydney St. James. Happy listening.